Well, we're cooking a little bit in the upper Midwest today. We've had some hot weather the last few days. We've got a, what they call a heat dome or a ring of fire or something that has uh, taken over. High pressure has taken over the area and we've seen some excessive heat, pretty high for us. Um, and yeah, I know folks down in the southern U.S., they're not going to be too impressed with this, but for those of us up here in the um, upper Midwest, it's definitely uh, definitely an unusual thing, and it's the hottest we've been this summer. But this situation has kind of led me to, or inspired me, to talk a little bit about temperatures in your pond, and so that's what this video is going to be about. The the idea of, of this experience or, or inspiration from this experience made me think back to the temperature influences and some of the temperature related things that would uh, be of interest to a pond owner. And I wanted to talk about a few of those today. Nothing comprehensive, nothing too deep and, and uh, you know, in, in, uh, in depth, but something that I think is useful for everyone to know. We'll start on the cool end of things because I try to counter this beautiful 101 degrees here today. Um, this would have more to do with treatments. And just to note, I'm not aware of any chemicals typically that are affected very much by temperature. There, there may be a few, but for the most part, um, the effectiveness or the ineffectiveness of those is often more related to the water chemistry. And that's always a good thing to know. pH, alkalinity, hardness, you want to know those things whenever you're treating with a chemical. But temperature isn't quite as important uh, with chemicals, but it is with microbes. It is with beneficial bacteria treatments. Most of the beneficial bacteria that you will see on the market today, unless it's listed otherwise, will be a warm water blend of bacteria. This means that it should be used in water temperatures of 55, 60 degrees on up. Um, there are cold water blends, polar blends. We have two. Our Biosphere Pro actually is an all season blend, so it has both warm and cold water bacteria in it. And then our Pond Biotics Polar Blend is really meant for cooler temperatures, cooler water. And those can work down to 35 to 40 degrees. Uh, and we would use those some to help clean up some ponds in higher elevations, mountain uh, areas in the west, you know, that are higher elevation and the water never gets warm. But for the most part, uh, the brunt of the work that you see done with microbes today is a warm water blend. And with muck digesting bacteria, which is often in pellet form, those are strictly warm water treatments. Uh, in our case, our, our product shouldn't be used at uh, any lower than 60 degrees and ideally 60 on up for the best performance. And once things cool off, everything gets a little sluggish. It doesn't mean that you know, it won't carry over, like if you treated late into the fall and then you had water warm up in the spring. Sometimes we do see some carryover benefits, but generally you wouldn't want to treat a pond once you get into the late fall and things really cool down with microbes too much. There's not a huge benefit to that. And make sure, you know, you check your water temperature from time to time to, to know that you're going to get the most out of these treatments. That's important, I think. So the next thing, temperature that I think is useful to know about is around 78 degrees and you may know where I'm going with this but at 78 degrees and above <clears throat> water will start to lose its ability to retain oxygen to retain dissolved oxygen and this is why when you get into summertime temperatures they could be extreme temperatures but they don't have to be um, in some ponds, if oxygen is sort of low or marginal to begin with, and then you get into a warmer period, this is when you see fish losses. And in a daily 24-hour cycle, especially if you have a little bit of growth, a little bit of plant growth in there, you're going to see the lowest point in a 24-hour cycle, usually in the wee hours of the morning, just before dawn, that's gonna be the lowest dissolved oxygen in the pond in that 24 hour cycle. And this is why fish, when they're lost due to oxygen deprivation, many times it's overnight, 
right before dawn and if you're losing the big fish first that's an indication that it's an oxygen problem but you want to remember that 78 degrees and above uh, water temperature the water simply cannot retain oxygen very well and that's why aeration in any form really is very important for fish protection and uh, and to help them through these periods and these summer periods really because 78 isn't that warm of a temperature but it it is the point where oxygen starts to um, you know a pond starts to have issues with oxygen retention so as we work our way up it also involves fish and heat and fish don't go together very well but the challenge for them isn't just oxygen it also can come down to water temperature and you will see this I've done a video on this actually a couple and I'll, I'll provide some links below to what to watch out for it's a very specific situation it's in shallower ponds eight feet uh, or less in depth and these ponds don't have a cool water reservoir at the bottom of the pond to help mitigate the high temperature at the surface and of course these aerators do mix the water as well as oxygenate it and those are both very useful things but if you have a pond that is being mixed with very very warm to hot water at the top and you have no cooling buffer at the bottom you can actually heat the pond up too much and I go into more details in the other video which I'll include the link to that and you can you can peruse that if it applies to you but with uh, fish or in regards to fish around 85 degrees mid 80s is a point where some fish start to get stressed a bit uh, it, it may not cause losses but they're starting to get stressed and this would include a lot of common fish bass catfish crappie you name it they can start to suffer at that level as you push the water temperature up to 90 degrees and above they can sustain that for a short while but if it is pretty much sustained for a longer period of time the risk of death and, and losses start to mount and just like oxygen deprivation if the temperatures exceed their tolerable limits and uh, and they start to get stressed too much from that you can lose a lot of fish pretty quickly and so we would simply change the way we aerate in extremely hot conditions um, sometimes it's useful to aerate just from the surface sometimes it's useful just to aerate at night to limit the mixing of the pond during the heat of the day that kind of thing and uh, yeah so that's that's something to be aware of and a direct effect of temperature on your pond and on the fish in it the other final thing I want to mention which isn't so much related to a specific temperature but I want you to be very very careful in conditions like this where you're talking about 90 100 degrees um, very calm conditions stifling heat this is a tough time to try to treat a pond uh, you know with anything most of us will see problems with algae in conditions like this uh, hot summer conditions and high nutrients and a lot of sun will grow a lot of plant life and whether it's algae or aquatic weeds or duckweed whenever you kill a plant off and particularly if it's with a chemical which is usually a rapid killing uh, tool it's not gradual it, it is usually pretty rapid and uh, when that plant dies off it will pull oxygen from the water as it dies if you're already on a threshold if your pond is already stressed because of the heat and your oxygen is limited that can definitely tip the scales to kill a lot of fish too so you you need to be very careful or just don't treat it all in conditions like this if you can help it if you do make sure you're very well aerated that's that's number one and then you can also work on limiting or timing the die off a little bit so that in other words you if you have a mass of algae let's say don't treat it all at once treat a small section at a time to spread out the die off process so that it isn't pulling as much oxygen from the pond as it dies you're kind of limiting the die off speed and that can definitely get you through some stressful periods when you feel like you really do want to treat the issue so at any rate you know this is just something that we all have to deal with at one point or another uh, some people really love the heat 
I get it. It's not my favorite thing, and I don't necessarily think it's great for ponds and for fish. It puts a lot of stress on them. But knowing what to do and when to do it, uh, I think can be very useful. And uh, like I said, hopefully this video will be helpful to you to, to clarify a few things, give you a few numbers to work with, and when to use what and when not to use something, and, uh, and what to do when things get kind of brutal out there. And as I said, check out some other videos I've posted below, which I think will help clarify some of these topics that I brought up, and it'll cover those things in more detail. As always, if you have questions about your pond, aeration in general, be sure to get in touch with us at AmericanAeration.com. Hope you have a great day wherever you are, even if it's 101 degrees. Take care.